Welcome back to another episode of Fear of a Flat Planet, presented by Toyota. I am your new host, John Leslie, two-time Paralympic snowboarder, and I am stoked to be here today with Sandrin Hemel. Sandrin, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. Um, what's up today? What, what have you been up to? Where are you? I'm in my basement right now. Nice. And uh, today I've had a strength and conditioning session and also I've started taking um, drum class. So I did that this afternoon. You took a what? You're confused right now. A, a drug test? Drum class. No, drum. Oh, bar, a bar, drum bar, class. Bar. Oh, so your basement, the drum class, where is all this happening? Where in Canada are you? I, I live an hour from Montreal, so it's pretty much in this area. Nice. Sweet. Okay. Well, I know this, but the, the people tuning in do not know this. Um, where was your last training camp? You just got back from a training camp, did you not? I did. You were there, actually. I, I and... was. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You were there. Believe it or uh, not, I know this story. Yeah. And so John and I, we were at Sunshine Village for a week, and we were doing a bank slalom training camp. Nice. And... We... and- Yep. I didn't see you on the last day. Um, was there a particular <laughs> reason behind that? John. <laughs> uh, who told you that story? <laughs> Lisa told me that story as no. she was dying in the start date. So for you, for those of you who don't know, Sandrine, Sarah, Lisa, was Nadine there? Nadine. No? They went out for sushi and got food poisoning on the last day of our training. And they had to skip the final day because they were just Uh, sick, eh? Yes, it is rough. Oh, man. Yeah. I mean, only Lisa made it. And she's like a hero, I I believe. I I don't know if you could count that as making it. Oh, she looked that bad? Oh, she she was riding, but... That was the only thing she was able to do, I think. Breathe <laughs> and ride. She wasn't talking, like just drinking water. Like, <laughs> yeah, it was it was good. Okay. Um, so uh, that's probably, that was a bad part. But like, did you get to ride in the new Canada snowboard vehicle at all? Like, did you get to whip in that with Greg or were you guys? Yeah. In- yeah? yeah. Yeah. And even in our previous training camp too, um, I think Toyota has been really good with us. I'm nice. grateful to have them as a partner, obviously. That's awesome. Yeah, I know. When I drove by uh, Greg in the truck or in his like forerunner, I was just like, okay, I like I'm just driving around in my 2000 Tacoma. Like, <laughs> I'll put a sticker right? on my truck. Like, I know. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, so it's been a weird year, obviously, this year. Um, what did kind of training look like for you like I I know you like we were both kind of in Pano uh, in November when that second wave hit and then we pivoted like we thought we were probably going to go to Europe but um what'd you do you you were were you in Montreal like Canmore where'd you spend most of your season we were training in Canmore for almost the whole season yeah we spent two months there starting from November and then pretty much the rest of this season we were training at Sunshine again and they were great uh, with us to build us stuff. And we were able to have really good training camp, actually. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Like, I think it was sweet. There would have never been another year for Greg to be able to, like, establish such a good connection with with a local ski hill like that. And for them to build. Because did you know, do you know that Ben, like the cat drivers, the guy who built us the courses in 2018? Really? I didn't know that. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was Ben and Lucas from Snowpark Arena. They built our course in Pyeongchang. And uh, Lucas is based in Whistler. He builds the park here. And Ben Ben is based in Sunshine and he builds the park there. So that's why they're, he kind of knows how to have already built like pair of courses because um, he was there 
to build it. For the listeners, what's a pair of courses, John? <laughs> right. What is a pair of courses, Andrew? Yeah. That's a great question. Right? What does that mean? I don't um, know. What, what does that mean to you? Okay. Well, I guess to me, it would mostly be the way they maybe build jumps. So if you like, I don't know. It's so just the basically that. Is? The, the maybe the the way they shape the landing or that if you for some reason case it you're not gonna die basically exactly and that's what's so <laughs> that nice as a quote like, <laughs> the, the border cross tracks is like it was probably really easy for sunshine to like turn it into a public track and yeah. then i would assume with our bank slalom they probably didn't even have to change it at all like if you're hitting any of those jumps and rails you're going to hurt yourself way worse than in our bank slalom. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Well, because you got to think also they built it for example, someone who's got one knee. Yeah. Or Tyler, like missing both their legs. Like, yeah. You know, so, you know, and that would not hold up in court. Like if you're like suing sunshine and you're like able body and you're like, I went through the parabank slalom and like <laughs> now I need some money. They'd be like, they'd show you a video of Tyler and they'd just be like, no. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Um, cool. So yeah, so we're both snowboarders. Uh, obviously, we've been talking a little bit about the team and you know where we've been most recently, but uh, you know, I'm even a little bit curious about this. Like, how did you get into snowboarding? Like, you obviously probably started able body or how did all that start with you um I started first skiing from what I remember um but we quickly figured out that it wasn't gonna work um so I switched to snowboarding I was about eight years old and I was going to school at it was like a ski program where we would go well snowboard whatever how you want to call it uh we would go twice a week it wasn't ever as a like thinking about racing, I would actually do other team sport with the able-bodied, mostly uh, basketball. And it's later that I found out about um, uh, that para snowboard was actually like, uh, I I could compete as an athlete in snowboarding. And it's by watching you and Michelle on YouTube at Sochi. Crazy. Like, oh shit, it's actually a thing. Actually, and here, we <laughs> here we are. <laughs> here we are. Like yeah, 10 years much. later almost. That's awesome. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, you're you... a hero. Oh man. Uh, you're a national hero. Don't worry. I know already. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so that's crazy. So eight years old, you switched from skiing to snowboarding. Yeah. I, Wait. and I didn't even, honestly, full disclosure, I didn't even enjoy it at first. Oh, really? Like, I didn't even like it that much. I know. I, You're like, I, I like this it, but more than class, though. I liked it, but not like today. I do that. I do like I'm snowboarding every day, when, yeah. especially yeah. when I'm in training camp. And <laughs> at the time, I didn't even like it. So it's kind of funny when I look back. I feel like I can relate a lot in terms of seeing an opportunity. I could yeah. potentially go to a Paralympic Games. Well, you know that I'm really competitive. Yes. So. I, I, like right now obviously I enjoy it like I enjoy training and I enjoy snowboarding but at the yeah. time it was just like that I, I liked it but it, it something was missing that's what I'm trying to say basically yeah so like you saw this as an opportunity for you to compete fairly for the first time probably yeah. in your life you would actually be able to see yeah. where you stand against someone else with a similar disability yeah, but even like when I was playing basketball, to be fair, I didn't even mind that it was with able body. <laughs> yeah, no, I was the same. Like I used to play hockey with able. I just like getting out there. Like I, it was that or sit at home, and it was like, well, I'm not gonna sit at home. So yeah, I just figured I got this, and I yeah, I guess You're I survived. You're good at basketball. You've kicked my butt in basketball. I don't even play well, with you anymore. I think it's for the running part that is a problem for us. Dude, yeah. <laughs> At least you can shoot when you can't run or shoot. Oh boy. That's right. So in 2014, you kind of saw this video of Michelle and I. Yeah. And then did you reach out to Canada Snowboard? How did your relationship with Canada Snowboard kind of start? Was it positive? Was it negative? Like, tell me about that. I contact Quebec Snowboard first. 
Yeah. And then they referred me to Kim. Nice. Super Kim. Which, shout Super out to her. Kim. Super Kim. I love Kim and- too. Yeah. Shout out to Kim. <laughs> um so yeah and then she put me in contact with the coaches and then they invited me to my first camp uh yukon in 2016 uh 17 no 16 yeah crazy and yeah you were there i I was yep you were really you're really good with the rookies so (laughs) shout out to john too yay seriously (laughs) no but for real like it's like nerve-wracking at first especially because i wasn't as comfortable in english mm. so i remember that first training camp i was almost as exhausted from snowboarding than speaking to you guys yeah it's like <laughs> Forget, yeah. That. that's crazy i i always it's always nice to talk to teammates because we've all had such different ways in onto the team and i would have never i couldn't imagine how much more traveling you challenging it would be to do everything I did same as you but then also have like imagine if I did it reverse like if I went to Quebec and I had to do all this in French could you see me driving like (laughs) yeah so you got into disabled snowboarding obviously we're kind of on that subject I have a pretty good idea of like what the male and like guy side of the sport like the community is like like we have a pretty Mm -hmm. good community i'd say like just the whole the -hmm. whole squad has a good community what's the girl community like do you guys have a good within canada you know obviously i know the answer to that question but like within (laughs) canada you guys got a good squad like internationally like what's it like for you being in the disabled snowboard community uh i've never heard the term disabled snowboard community well that's what you're in man (laughs) That's what I sign up for. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I think well within the team we're really competitive that we with each other. So yeah. that brings, I think, a really good energy. Um, and even on the international level, I think it's it's the same thing I for you guys, but to some at some point we can all relate to just being not I don't like say born differently or you don't have to explain it. You don't have that ap- awkward, like awkward questions or like they don't seem awkward when they ask. Um, not that I don't, I don't have any problem with question, but you don't have that. That's good. That's great to hear. I'd say I have very similar, you know, there's a very good balance of competitive nature, but also support, you know? Yeah. I think uh, you would probably say the same thing. Like, at the top of the course, it's different than when we're like eating breakfast. Yeah, or but, bowling, or bowling, or whatever <laughs> we're doing. But like after the race, we're all friends. When we're at the top of the course, it's showtime. So everybody's doing their thing. Awesome. Well, I'm glad to hear that the female side is the same as the male side on that one because it makes traveling and competing a lot easier when you know you're going to go visit some friends on, on top of your teammates. Right. That's actually one of the things that I miss the most from yeah. well, last that's, season. It's not yeah, being able to. That's half my friends. friends. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I haven't seen Mati for like a year. <laughs> like he's one of my best friends. Like, Do you cry at night because of that? No, we text each other. <laughs> oh, okay. At least. <laughs> um, cool. So that's awesome to hear. You're kind of similar to me in terms of like, you very much came up all able body you've like kind of like dipped your toes in disabled snowboarding now. Mm -hmm. How do you see the contrast back of like how accepting able body snowboarding is with disabled snowboarding? Like I know your disability is really hard to see. So like, do you run into conflict on the Hill? Do you, do you normally find that people are like pretty accepting? Like what's your experience with that? the way we work together and what they do in a way we're we're training and we're racing. That's what we're doing. And that's what they're doing. They're doing. So I think we can all relate to that. doesn't matter if uh, disabled or not. It's the same thing. Yeah. The, the only difference basically is that we're not racing the same course and sometimes in training we are. So, yeah. and I think that doing that even for, for, for them we become like any other rider 
Yeah. No, I, I don't know for you, but I never felt like I was treated differently. No, I, no, no, no. Actually, I think I've always gotten the opinion that they're really accepting. Like when they do. find out that they're, because like you think about it, most people may not even know that there's such thing as disabled snowboarding. <laughs> Why would they think about it? Do you sometimes get tired of having to like tell the story or trying to explain to someone like, What's going on uh, here? Not really, because I don't have to explain it. <laughs> people can, it's pretty visual enough for people. I 100% avoid it most of the time. Oh, yeah. Nice. I'm like, oh, or, oh, I hate to say it. I'm going to say it because, it, it, well, I don't do it anymore, but I would, <laughs> I don't know if I should say that. No, say it. I would tell, I would say I'll tell them like a random story that is not even true. Oh, I've done that before too. Oh, for sure. <laughs> There's probably What's your like, go to. <laughs> oh, shark attack. What's your go go to? Oh, me too. Really? I would go with shark attack even if it makes no sense. <laughs> that makes no sense. I would sense usually like pick up that makes I no know. sense. But people, don't that. Know, people don't know that. Actually, let's rewind a second. Why wouldn't that make any sense? Okay. So for the viewers, people that are listening to the podcast online, I have an artificial leg below the knee. So I've got my leg chopped off below the knee on the left. Sandrin's a little bit different. Um, Sandrin, probably better for you to dive in on this, but want to explain your disability to everybody so that they can laugh with us on the jokes. Now, yeah, now I can't lie. I can't say it's the shark attack. Just, you know, <laughs> no, it's not true. Um, it's it's mainly, I think the best way to describe it, uh, in my case, it's more like a, I have a leg that is stronger than the other one. Yeah. And I also have a scoliosis. So that means that my spine is shaped like the letter S. Mm -hmm. So that affect mostly, the I would say, the posture and the legs, the, the strength. I have one that is stronger than the other one. So I, I think in fact, the way I walk, that would be more like a, I've heard someone say it was like a pimp walk. And I like that. I think That's it's like awesome. Them, but yeah. First impression of Sandra, just a pimp. I walk like a pimp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like the best way to like picture it. No, that makes so. sense. But you're yeah. not missing any not, body it, parts. The sh it, but you just tell people. I'm not. That you're that's bit why. By a shark. Where Where did you get bit? When you tell people this. I haven't used the shark one in a long time. <laughs> okay. As an adult, I'm okay. not using. I'm. I like because, you know, it happens to people for real. So that's why I'm like, okay. I just go for the. I was born like that. And usually it doesn't bring. That's like, not follow up fun at all. Which is the truth. And it's, the, <laughs> I know. That's how I felt. I thought, man, I thought <laughs> having cancer was actually a pretty cool story until we got onto the Paris circuit. <laughs> um, cool. So again, we'll, we'll give our listeners a little bit more of a deep dive here. They may not know this, but Sandrin, you're actually a pretty badass snowboarder. You're actually kind of well decorated now at this point in your career in terms of world cups and world championships and do tours and stuff like that. Um, what I would like to ask you about, because I've been there is what was harder for you to come back from getting in a car accident before due tour or not being able to breathe before due tour. <laughs> That was a fun day. <laughs> Those were two separate days, um, right? That wasn't the same day, was it? No, it was the same day. It on was our way the there, same we had the car. <laughs> oh yeah, my was. goodness. I thought those were two separate no, years. No. No. Okay, so Sandrine, what year was that? The best due tour of your life? <laughs> that what was that? That was like two, three years ago. So Sandrin has the was it it's asthma right you have really bad asthma uh well it's more that my spine is like putting pressure on my lungs so my like lungs capacity is not the greatest no so high altitude is like my worst like and why are we at high altitude where where's due to her Brackenridge so and that sits at like higher than the the peak of Whistler is lower than where we sleep in Breckenridge. <laughs> 
Yeah. So yeah, if I had to pick, it's definitely the part where I can't breathe. <laughs> yeah. So but... Sandrine, at this whole contest, <laughs> which I for some reason thought was a year before, has like an air tube with oxygen going on. If that's not like enough of a distraction before a contest, we got oh. in a car accident on the <laughs> way to the hill. So we're laughing because Sandrine that day literally would have had to go from car accident to getting hooked up to oxygen <laughs> to racing, which if anyone's ever raced before, that would be very hard to mentally come back from. And how did you do at that race? We got bronze, John. We you made got it. bronze. <laughs> you got bronze. I think this, this time it was a team effort. Shout out to the doctor too. <laughs> <laughs> and the snowmobile driver. Showing up this training just for my to run and then back to the medical tent. Oh my gosh. That's so funny. <laughs> Such a I good day. I can't believe that was the same year. I wrote down in my notes that that was two separate years. So that's great. Wow. Good <laughs> the same for you. Day. The mental <laughs> strength. You can handle anything now. Like right? bring it on. Yeah. So what, what's been your favorite memory on the team so far? And if you can't think of like the absolute greatest memory, maybe just tell me a story of like a good time that you've had on the para team. Probably the games, obviously. And um, when we had a training camp in Dubai, that was crazy. Oh, that was so cool. Yeah. That was that a was fun so experience. Sick. Yeah. I mean, when are you going to have the chance to say that you went to Dubai for snowboarding? Yeah. And like, just with your team, like Owen and, um, that other guy forgetting his name right now oh and we almost passed out when we went to dubai who did you and me because of the heat you don't remember when we were walking around we like a heat stroke we did yeah you were about to catch on fire and we were seeing stars waiting for the taxi i can't remember this it makes sense that I don't if I was at like going through heat. Stroke. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. I do remember this. Like, how do you not remember that? I just <laughs> took me a second. We were both seeing stars. Like, oh my gosh. I remember jumping in like the ocean and it was not cold. You're just yeah. like, how do I cool down in this spot? Like, oh my gosh. That's too funny. Oh, yeah. That was another good one. Too funny. Cool. So we've kind of covered everything. Like we've kind of gotten, you know, how you got into snowboarding, disabled snowboarding, a couple funny stories along the way. What does the future hold for Sandrine? What What are your plans? Obviously, is 2022 on the radar for you, Beijing? I, I'm, I'm planning on quitting like two weeks before the games. Oh, okay. Perfect. Good to know. Well, we'll I didn't tell sure. anybody yet, so that's how I'm going to tell everybody. Basically. This is how you're doing retirement. All right, we, <laughs> all, have, we all have our own ways. <laughs> no, well, yes, ideally it would be uh, obviously the next games. Um, Got to start by a call. Qual- we need to qualify first. Yeah, I think we're both in the same situation. Well, everybody is. Um, so yeah, I think it would be Beijing, but for now, I'm just thinking about the next camp. Yeah, like, in May with COVID with covid you never know so i go more like step by step cool before yeah, and then you never know what, what about like outside of snowboarding like you're you're gearing up for beijing it sounds like you're playing the drums um yeah no drug we, we dove into no like class. yeah drum class we dove into your um basketball a little bit people may not know that you also box um oh yeah <laughs> is there anything else going on on the side for you in the coming future or, or are you, I know this, like you're, you're, you're taking things really seriously for 2022. So are you, are you pretty much aligning everything for snowboarding or is there anything else going on? I know that uh, this summer I'm going to continue trying to learn how to ride a dirt bike. That's oh, sick. The other thing that I'm thinking about doing, um, yeah. which yeah, I need to think about this and be smart, obviously, because I've never learned how to ride a bike. And I decided that it was a good idea to buy a dirt bike um, because I, I, I love to make that decision. So that's Hell what I'm yeah. planning to do. Yeah. Hell yeah. So if I, su- have it last if I survive year? I this think summer. I know this. How long have you had your bike for? 
uh, one summer. One summer. Okay. So you want to so ride I, a little I still, bit more? I, yeah, I still suck. That's what I'm trying to say. That's basically. fine. Hey. So we all suck at some point. We, we all do. Yep. So yeah, that's what I'm. <laughs> so that's what I'm planning to do. Um. Yeah, trying to obviously try different things to make it not too boring. Do you have any like? bad disabled stories for us or like misconceptions well no i don't have bad stories actually can you believe it no that's good it it, it, it has to do with your character you know you you're avoiding most of these situations and sandrin is very chill letting things roll off her shoulders we could all take a little lesson out of her book um (laughs) Amazing. So I, I think we're pretty good. How about like if anyone out there wants to follow you or anything, any type of projects that you're up to, like what's the best way if I wanted to follow your journey to 2022, how would I do that? You can follow me on my Instagram. What's your Something Instagram? In Definitely exactly. a solid follow, Sandrin. Um, Thank you. Amazing. Well, unless you, if you have anything else to say, I think we're going to wrap it up here. Um, <laughs> I super fun. appreciate your time. Shout out to our sponsor, Toyota. Thank you to the listeners for listening and we'll catch you guys next time.